Story number one, The Bell Witch Vertical Bar, Adams, Tennessee. Once upon a time, nestled in the serene countryside of Adams, Tennessee, there lived the Bell family. John Bell, a hard-working farmer, his devoted wife Lucy, and their children carved out a humble existence on their sprawling farm. But tranquility soon gave way to terror as strange occurrences began to plague the Bell homestead. It started with subtle knocks on doors and walls, barely audible whispers drifting through the air. But as time passed, the disturbances grew more ominous. The family found themselves under siege by an unseen force, a malevolent entity that would come to be known as the Bell Witch. Its presence was felt in every corner of the farm, its wrath seemingly directed at John Bell and his daughter Betsy. The Bell Witch reveled in tormenting the family, unleashing a barrage of physical assaults and terrifying apparitions. John Bell bore the brunt of its fury, enduring bruises, scratches and even strangulation at the hands of the unseen spectre. Neighbours and visitors alike were drawn to the Bell Farm, eager to witness the chilling phenomena for themselves. Among them was none other than Andrew Jackson, future President of the United States, who left shaken by the encounter. As the years passed, the Bell Witch's reign of terror intensified. Yet amidst the chaos, the true identity of the spirit remained shrouded in mystery. Some whispered that it was the vengeful spirit of a neighbour, Kate Batts, nursing a long-held grudge against John Bell. But regardless of its origins, the Bell Witch's malevolent presence cast a dark shadow over the once idyllic farm. And when John Bell finally succumbed to the unexplained affliction that had plagued him for years, the haunting ceased as suddenly as it had begun. Today, the legend of the Bell Witch lives on, whispered around campfires and passed down through generations. It serves as a reminder of the thin veil between the world of the living and the realm of the unknown, where spirits may linger and secrets lie buried beneath the earth. Story number two, The Ghosts of the Crescent Hotel, Vertical Bar, Eureka Springs, Arkansas. In the quaint town of Eureka Springs, nestled amidst the picturesque Ozark Mountains of Arkansas, stands the majestic Crescent Hotel. Built in 1886 as a luxurious resort, it quickly earned a reputation as the Grand Old Lady of the Ozarks. Yet behind its stately facade lies a darker, more mysterious history, one haunted by the restless spirits of its past. Legend has it that the Crescent Hotel has long been a hot spot for paranormal activity, with countless reports of ghostly encounters and eerie phenomena. From the spectre of a young woman in Victorian attire wandering the halls to the ghostly laughter of children echoing through empty corridors, the hotel teems with otherworldly energy. One of the most infamous tales centres around a tragic chapter in the hotel's past, that of Michael, an Irish stonemason who fell to his death during the building's construction. His spirit is said to linger within the hotel, forever trapped between the realms of the living and the dead. But Michael is not alone in his spectral wanderings. Guests and staff alike have reported encounters with a host of restless souls, from the ghostly figure of a nurse pushing a gurney through the halls to the phantom of a mischievous young girl playing pranks on unsuspecting visitors. Perhaps most chilling of all is the tale of Norman Baker, a notorious charlatan who turned the Crescent Hotel into a fraudulent cancer hospital in the 1930s. It's said that the tortured souls of Baker's victims still roam the halls, their anguished cries echoing through the night. Despite its haunted reputation, the Crescent Hotel continues to welcome guests from near and far, drawn by the allure of its opulent charm and the thrill of encountering the supernatural. For those brave enough to spend a night within its hallowed walls, the hotel offers a journey into the unknown, where the line between reality and the realm of spirits blurs, and the ghosts of the past come alive once more. Story number three, The Crying Lady in the Dakota Vertical Bar. New York in the heart of bustling New York City, amidst the towering skyscrapers and bustling streets, stands the iconic Dakota Building. A historic landmark with a storied past, it is perhaps best known as the site of one of the city's most enduring mysteries, the legend of the crying lady. 
As the story goes, many years ago, a young woman named Eleanor resided in the Dakota with her husband, a wealthy businessman. Despite their lavish lifestyle, Eleanor's life was far from idyllic. Her husband was often absent, consumed by his work and affairs, leaving Eleanor alone in their opulent apartment. Lonely and neglected, Eleanor's days were filled with longing and sorrow, but it was during the long cold nights of winter that her despair reached its peak. As the icy winds howled outside, Eleanor would sit by the window, gazing out at the city below, with tears streaming down her face. It was said that the haunting sound of her cries echoed through the halls of the Dakota, chilling the hearts of all who heard it. Some claimed to have seen her ghostly figure standing in the window, her face etched with sadness as she wept for a life unlived. Rumors swirled about the cause of Eleanor's despair. Some whispered of a tragic love affair, while others spoke of a secret illness that consumed her from within. But whatever the truth may be, one thing remains certain. The legend of the crying lady has endured through the years, woven into the fabric of the Dakota's history. Today, visitors to the Dakota building still speak in hushed tones of the ghostly apparition that is said to haunt its halls. And on cold winter nights, when the city is shrouded in darkness, some claim to hear the faint sound of a woman weeping, her mournful cries echoing through the streets of New York. Whether Eleanor's spirit truly lingers within the Dakota, or whether it is merely the stuff of legend, one thing is for certain. The mystery of the crying lady will continue to captivate the imagination of all who hear her tale story number four. In the quaint southern town of Abbeville, Alabama, nestled amidst the rolling hills and cotton fields, there lurks a legend that has been passed down through generations, the legend of Huggin Molly. As the story goes, Huggin Molly was a spectral figure who roamed the streets of Abbeville in the dead of night, striking fear into the hearts of children and adults alike. Described as a tall, shadowy woman with glowing eyes and long, flowing hair, she would emerge from the darkness, her arms outstretched as if to embrace her unsuspecting victims. The mere mention of her name was enough to send shivers down the spines of the townsfolk, and parents would warn their children to be home before dark, lest they encounter the dreaded Hugin Molly. Some claimed she was the spirit of a grieving mother whose child had been taken from her, while others believed she was a vengeful ghost seeking retribution for past wrongs. Regardless of her origins, Huggin Molly became a fixture of local folklore, with countless tales of her nocturnal wanderings and eerie presence. Some claimed to have seen her lurking in the shadows, while others swore they felt her icy touch upon their skin. But despite the fear she inspired, there were those who believed that Huggin Molly was not a malevolent spirit, but rather a protector of the town's children. According to legend, she would only appear to those who were out past their bedtime, urging them to return home safely before it was too late. To this day, the legend of Huggin Molly lives on in Abbeville, serving as a reminder of the power of folklore and the enduring allure of the unknown. Whether she was a harbinger of doom or a guardian angel in disguise, one thing is for certain. The tale of Huggin Molly continues to captivate the imagination of all who hear it, ensuring that her legacy will endure for generations to come.